Um, hello, everyone. Um, welcome to the uh, intro and uh, deep dive session of Sig Era. Uh, my name is Peng Fei Ni, and uh, uh, before uh, the session started, now uh, let's uh, introduce uh, ourselves. So, uh, Craig, would you like to introduce yourself? Thank you, Peng Fei. So, I'm Craig Peters. I am a PM uh, program manager at Microsoft, and I work uh, on everything that is container infrastructure and upstream open source uh, container infrastructure software that Azure depends upon. And uh, so Kubernetes is a key part of that and uh, the Azure cloud provider and all the related software is part of what I work on. My background is actually in um, distributed systems and, and open source. I've been with Microsoft for about six months now uh, working on these kinds of things. Uh, here is contact information for myself and Peng Fei. Yeah, uh, so we have uh, our two WeChat uh, contacts, so you can scan them to jo join us. Uh, so I'm Peng Fei from uh, also from the Microsoft, and I, I work uh, mainly uh, aiming to uh, increase the uh, Kubernetes experience on Azure. So I, I also can contribute to the community calls such as Container Runtime and uh, uh, Azure Cloud Provider. Okay. So we wanted to start by understanding uh, who is in the audience. So first and foremost, I, I see some friendly faces from the Microsoft crew. So everybody who's Microsoft, feel free to say, here I am, we, we, uh, we, we contribute to making sure that uh, Azure runs great and we'll be here to support your workloads, but I see some of us in the audience who are not. So I want to kind of understand who you are at some level and what you're interested in. Why, why, are, you, why are you here? So first, have you ever participated, any of you, in a SIG Azure activity of any kind? A meeting, on the Slack channel, in any way? Nope? Okay. So uh, do you run any workloads or any Kubernetes related things on Azure today. Does anybody do that? You do, fantastic. Um, great, we've got a couple more people joining. Come on in, glad you're here. So uh, have, has anyone in the room used AKS Engine? We're familiar with AKS Engine. AKS Engine is an open source project that creates uh, essentially, it's a template generator for creating uh, Azure Resource Manager uh, definitions of Azure of Kubernetes clusters on, on Azure. So, any of you familiar with that? No. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, how many of you have used Azure Kubernetes Service to run your clusters? Couple. Okay. Everybody else, how are how are you running Kubernetes on Azure? What's your method for running? Okay, so you, so you use a third-party platform that, that it somehow handles creating the Kubernetes clusters on Azure, and then it runs its, its own resources there? I see. So it, it does all of the orchestration of the serv Kubernetes services on VMs for you. Okay, very good. Uh, and uh, how many of you here came here because you want some help? with running Kubernetes on Azure. So you, you, you yeah. have any question, you can yeah. add that. I just wanted to kind of understand where you were going, and, and you know, for the rest of you who are here, I hope we can help answer some questions or raise yeah. some, some, some things for you so you understand what's going on. So, okay, that, that kind of is kind of what I expected. Um, so let's give you a quick introduction to who, who is SIG Azure and what's happening with it. So. SIG Azure is, a, is in the Kubernetes community, if you're not familiar, what a special interest group. A special interest group is a community of people who uh, are responsible for maintaining a set of capabilities in the Kubernetes ec ecosystem. In this case, making sure Kubernetes runs great on Azure. Uh, the chairs, I'm, I'm a newly elected co-chair, uh, and I share the co-chair responsibility uh, with Stephen Augustus, who works for VMware. 
Uh, VMware, of course, is very interested in making sure that Kubernetes runs great across all of the platforms VMware works with. Yeah. Uh, and Peng Fei uh, yeah. is a technical lead along with Cal, uh, also from Microsoft, uh, who, who works in the US uh, very closely to some of our crew here. Uh, you can learn more uh, about the governance of SIG Azure uh, from this link. Uh, all of the documentation for the way in which uh, the special interest groups operate are, are available uh, online on GitHub. Um, so why? why? Why do we need uh, a special interest group for a specific cloud? Right? Uh, that, that's a, a really valid question. And the answer is that it is now uh, b becoming obsolete to have uh, a special interest group that is focused on a cloud. So all of the individual cloud providers uh, are now working together under a common special interest group, which is called uh, SIG Cloud Provider. Uh, they, the transition for moving from the individual Azure-based SIG to the cloud provider SIG and having sub-projects under the cloud provider uh, reflects also the change in which the way cloud providers are taken advantage of in Kubernetes itself. So we've come to a common agreement among the Kubernetes community that cloud providers should operate in a common way so that when people are running their Kubernetes clusters on different clouds, you have a common set of expectations and ways in which you work with it. And so now we are going to transition the organization and governance around how we do that to a common methodology. That is SIG cloud provider with sub projects under the cloud provider for each of the related SIGs. So presumably uh, I may stay involved as a co-chair of the sub project for Azure under SIG Cloud Provider. There are several related efforts uh, that are going to take over governance of some of the sub-projects which SIG Azure has been responsible for up until now. Uh, the, uh, right now there's a, an effort called uh, Cluster API Provider Azure. That is going to move under the SIG Cluster Lifecycle Project uh, that's also the same thing is happening for the GCP, AWS, and, and other cloud providers. Uh, and, and so all of those things are getting consolidated. There's also a project, a sub-project of SIG Azure called the CSI Drivers for Azure. That is moving under as a sub-project under SIG Storage. Yeah. So essentially actually, things are moving to their home, kind of right. logical homes. Right. Uh, Actually, Andy is uh, maintaining the CF drivers for a file and a disk. Yeah, so we've got some of the principles involved in the room. So if you have very deep questions yeah. about those, don't ask me. We'll ask Andy. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I have some references here. Uh, once the slides are uh, uploaded into uh, the schedule site, schedule. you'll be able to get your own copies. I did forget to mention at the beginning that um, the slides will be updated uh, online, and they're both English and, and Chinese copies, yeah. uh, thanks to Peng Fei uh, for the Chinese copies. So I'll be happy to answer any questions about the transition. Oh, there's one other thing I should say about this transition about the governance, uh, and that is that today there is a very active uh, Slack channel uh, called SIG Azure. The, there are kind of two things happen in that Slack channel today. One is discussion about the development and mechanics of management of the Azure Cloud Provider projects and engineering work. The other kind of thing that happens in that Slack channel is user support. So we have a significant number of people who use Azure and go to the SIG Azure Slack channel to get help both from sort of Microsoft, but also from uh, their peers in the community. And that's a, a fantastic thing. The, the, obviously, the engineering work is going to move under SIG Cloud Provider, SIG Cluster Lifecycle, and SIG Storage. The user support things are going to move under uh, a new kind of structure called a uh, user group. Those user groups, uh, I actually don't know exactly what the structure of those are going to look like. Uh, but we'll be communicating 
you know, later this summer about what the user groups and how the user groups are going to work. So that, that will, there will continue to be a forum for that work. Yeah. Okay, uh, next uh, I, I will make uh, a simple introduction about the recent uh, accomplishment of Sigera. So the, the, the biggest thing uh, that we, we would uh, work maybe in, in the future, uh, two or three releases, we would move the cloud provider, uh, especially all the cloud specific uh, costs uh, would be out of tray. So, so, so for, for Azure, the, the cloud provider Azure uh, has already started the work and we have already set up the repo here. Uh, and it's also under uh, Kubernetes org and the repo name is uh, Cloud Provider Azure. So based on this, uh, we, we have also set up some uh, end-to-end test and validated its functionality. Uh, so for the current Kubernetes call, uh, all the Cloud Provider implementation have, have been moved to uh, stage. So, uh, and so, so other staged reports have, all, have all also uh, set up some uh, uh, synchronized uh, to a different repo. So then, uh, uh, for example, for, for the Cloud Provider Azure, we could uh, render that changes and we were still making changes in the staging directory and uh, uh, sync out and uh, uh, vendor use uh, in this Cloud Provider Azure. Okay, can I yeah. just say a couple of words about why this is happening? So if you're not familiar with uh, the work about the cloud providers, it might come a little out of context. An important piece of context is that historically the cloud provider code uh, organically grew up in the Kubernetes, Kubernetes repository. Yeah. Uh, the strength of that was that it was tightly integrated. The ability to run Kubernetes on VMware or Azure or GCP or on-prem was uh, you know, bare metal, was kind of built into Kubernetes itself. Over time, that has become very unwieldy uh, to manage very disparate kind of co implementations for how you run uh, Kubernetes on different infrastructures in that core code base. Uh, it has bloated the repository. It has uh, slowed down uh, the ability for the cloud providers to evolve. Uh, and most importantly, it forces the uh, release of changes to cloud provider code to be in lockstep with the release of Kubernetes. Yeah. Moving the cloud providers out of tree into their own repositories allows the different cloud providers to have their own release cycles, and uh, but it also forces us to pay a price, which is that we have to deal with uh, the sort of compatibility matrix and the testing. So how do you version cloud providers, say, independently uh, from the Kubernetes release? So that is all work that's ongoing in, in uh, the SIG cloud provider group. Yeah. Uh, actually, the out of tree cloud provider and also the, the next one, Cluster API provider Azure, they, they also have the, the same goal. So they yeah. decouple the Azure implementation from the core Kubernetes from the core Cluster API. So then we, we, we may achieve the, the same experience across different clouds. So maybe you, you, you need some uh, cross cloud solution. Uh, for example, your, your, your uh, China business uh, using uh, other cloud, but the, your U.S. business using Azure. So you can you can reuse your work based on the same solution, but the, the, the detailed implementations are different on different clouds. Um, so the next one is about uh, end-to-end testing. Well, we have already established the end-to-end testing for cloud, provi cloud provider Azure, and we have published the uh, end result to the Kubernetes test grade, so everyone can check the uh, details of our, our work. And uh, the testing is based on AKS Engine. So, so we, we use AKS Engine to uh, set up the testing environment, uh, build the uh, latest uh, uh, releases uh, of the, uh, maybe from master branches and uh, validate uh, various uh, uh, various test, test cases such as community uh, conforming test, uh, zero test, slow test, uh, and so on. And uh, the next item is about uh, uh, managed service identity. So for Azure, uh, uh, it supports um, uh, many many ways to authorize your applications. For example, the MSI, the user assigned MSI, the service principal. 
So you can ch uh, choose uh, use anyone, and but uh, but for for uh, from the Kubelet side, so Kubelet uh, it uh, need to initialize itself and uh, write it uh, itself to the Kubernetes node. Uh, so for Kubelet, we we support uh, using MSI, we support the service principal, we also support the user assigned MSI. But uh, since uh, the latest release uh, last week, one point fifteen, we also support. Uh, Initialize itself uh, without any credential, so so you don't need uh, MSI, you, you don't need the service principal. Uh, the Kubelet only uh, initialize itself, uh, get the required information from the uh, instance metadata. So uh, it, it knows its uh, internal IP is uh, availability zone and its uh, sub subscription name. So uh, it could uh, could get all of those those information. And uh, compose the provider and all the node metadata and write it, uh, write it itself to the uh, Kubernetes cluster. Okay, uh, and the next one is about the AirDisk and uh, AirFire plugin. So, AirDisk and AirFire plugin are also uh, depending on the call, uh, Air Cloud provider to, to make a request to Air and, uh, for example, create some uh, processing. Persistent volumes uh, from Azure. So for AirDisk and AirFire, we, we have set up the CS drivers. So that that is part of, part of the job to uh, split uh, to to to, to uh, achieve the out of tree cloud provider. So we have uh, uh, set up the CS drivers for this to uh, AirFire and uh, AirDisk driver, and we we have a. Uh, uh, we have planned to set up the end to end test for them, and we, we have also uh, working on the Windows port into uh, CSI. So, so for CSI, is, uh, uh, for CSI on Windows, um, there's still some uh, small issues we will need to figure out. So, maybe in the next release, 1.16, we may add that support. Uh, so, during this period, uh, we have also added some new features to this, the two plugins, such as the uh, Ultra SSD and standard SSD for air disk, and also the premier uh, air file driver. Okay, uh, and the next is about Azure load balancer. So uh, you know that if, if you use the uh, community service with type load balancer, then uh, Azure Cloud Provider would set up uh, uh, Azure load balancer and uh, the public IP, the SDs for you, uh, so that you can access your service. Uh, using that public IP, um, but uh, many customers uh, may need some uh, uh, the 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 specific use cases to, to change the behavior of this uh, area load balancer. So we supported a couple of uh, annotations. So for example, you can um, choose your, uh, your your load balancer is only internal. Um, maybe you you can use your uh, public IP that already have created. Uh, in the same uh, resource group, or maybe in another uh, resource group. And uh, the last one is about uh, um, many new features. For example, the auto scaling, the virtual machine scale size, the uh, availability zone, the cross resource group uh, nodes. So uh, we have moved such features, uh, such features from beta, uh, from alpha to beta. Actually, for uh, virtual machine scale size and auto scaling support, uh, they have been G and uh, uh, it is also supported now uh, in AKS product. So, and the, uh, the last one, so if you want to check the recent uh, updates, so what, what we have done in the latest release, uh, what bug, bug fixes are there, so you can check the community uh, release notes. Okay. Thanks. So what is it that we're planning to do next? So we're, we're the uh, bringing things out of tree. So the the out of tree cloud provider is the largest piece of work uh, that we need to do. We need to finish that work. It's a a very large project. To bring yeah, yeah. And then also include a a a, a few a, a couple of uh, different projects such as the CS driver for AirDisk, the CS driver for AirFile, the cluster API provider, and the cloud provider Azure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're also working on, we're going to go into these in a little bit more detail in a minute, but we're also working on uh, the ability to expose secrets uh, through the storage interface, the cloud storage interface as a driver. 
uh, as, as well as uh, exposing the ability to use Azure Active Directory uh, to identify and authenticate uh, services running in your pods. Uh, and two other really cool things, which are the ability to leverage an Azure service called Cosmos DB uh, as your etcd uh, for your clusters, which yeah. will give you scalability and cross region uh, cluster federation, which is going to be very interesting. And, and finally, uh, a lot of our customers are running out of IPv4 address space, and um, but they also can't completely move all of their services into IPv6. And, and so there's a need to uh, enable Kubernetes to support both IPv4 and v6. So we'll, we'll drill into that a little bit. So uh, I think Faye will talk a little bit about the cluster API provider. Um, yeah, so for cluster API provider Azure, uh, it is uh, actually uh, set up only recently, right? So we have a, a couple of uh, interns from Microsoft uh, and from Platform 9, right? Mm -hmm. So they helped uh, to uh, set up the repo and uh, make the initial work and uh, make it working uh, for introduce the Cloud API uh, into Azure. So uh, today, the Cloud API provider Azure had, uh, had been um, uh, introduced in the uh, Cloud uh, uh, lifecycle. So it had been the official project in Kubernetes and uh, it also uh, brings uh, the Cloud API related project um, also working in uh, Azure. So uh, the, the, the repo uh, here is the, the, the repo is um, in the Kubernetes 6 um, uh, org. So here uh, is a link. So you can uh, have a try and uh, get started and, uh, and using them to set up a cluster on Azure. So um, originally, we, 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 we suggest using AKS Engine to set up the cluster. But uh, today, you can also use uh, this project, uh, use uh, the Cloud API provider to provision the cluster. Uh, but uh, uh, you may know that the, the project is still uh, in its earlier stage. So there are still some issues there. For example, the virtual machine skill set is uh, still not supported yet. Uh, it is not supported, uh, not, supported uh, uh, not because we can't uh, add that in, in, in the Cloud API provider Azure, it's because the, the concept uh, from the Cloud API, uh, they, they don't uh, expose the interface uh, for, for, for the machine size, uh, the concept, uh, and allow the different provider to implement that. So for, for, for this part, uh, we have already a proposal uh, on the GitHub and uh, published uh, uh, this week, I think. Uh, so everyone can comment and leave message here. So when after the proposal get reviewed from the whole community, and then we would uh, add the virtual machine, um, virtual machine skill set there. So, 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 uh, so then uh, it could be compatible to uh, the AKS engine, and also we may add many new features here to support uh, more custom. Okay, the next. So the next thing is, uh, you know, the key thing is that. We all know that uh, secrets management in Kubernetes is is pretty challenging, and um, the, you know, the the real need that uh, enterprises have and have been coming to us with over and over again is that they don't want to move their secrets uh, into into Kubernetes secrets. Uh, the ability to handle that uh, has been challenging, uh, and uh, you know we've decided to try to support this by enabling uh, a CSI inline volume support uh, for mounting uh, essentially your secrets from other providers. And the initial uh, support has come for Azure Key Vault and HashiCorp Vault. So with the release of uh, 1.15, which just came out, you can now uh, make those uh, secrets that you, you you use in enterprise service uh, or your existing infrastructure available there. So what we would like is uh, to understand if uh, these two uh, providers uh, sort of meet all your needs, or if there are additional providers that uh, our customers 
want to bring into that. So if you have a key management capability that you would like to see there, please come and help us understand the need and if you even better if you can also implement a provider so the the way in which the code is structured it's it's very straightforward to implement your own additional provider and add it to the the project so I'd love to hear about that we also have now in in kind of a preview form the ability to uh, use Azure Active Directory as the authentication mechanism for the services that you're running in your pods. So you see here the link to the GitHub repo for that. Uh, it's got really straightforward documentation for how you apply that. Uh, the, the goal here is to make it so that your, your pods can essentially run uh, different authentication schemes, uh, or take advantage of the different roles and, uh, and authentication that you have set up already in uh, Azure Active Directory for your services that you're using for you know, the rest of your enterprise uh, in, in your Kubernetes pods so that you don't have to create a different kind of authentication scheme uh, specifically for Kubernetes services. Uh, the, the other piece of this is that you can now uh, join nodes to your clusters and have authentication for services that aren't uh, identified in uh, Azure Active Directory. You can essentially create nodes that are independent of your authentication scheme. Do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, so uh, for uh, pod identity, if you enable it in your cluster, then all the pods uh, access to the uh, instance metadata. When you get the token from there, uh, it will be hooked by pod identity. So, so, so then you can control each pod uh, access. Uh, you, you, you can decide which pod could get the token from Azure. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a very nice feature. I'd love to get feedback uh, for how you do that. And we're working to make this uh, you know, an integrated capability that's built right into Azure Kubernetes service. Today, it's supported as an add-on. Yeah, and the next is about the running your Kubernetes with the customer DB. So Cosmos DB is a global distributed uh, database on Azure, and uh, it now supports the preview feature. Uh, it it, it uh, provided the exit API, so so then you can uh, use this uh, uh, Cosmos DB as uh, the storage backend of your Kubernetes cluster. So uh, if you set up your your Kubernetes cluster on Azure. Uh, you can com configure and use uh, the custom DB just like uh, the, co the the XAD cluster is installed uh, on your uh, local machine. So uh, we can do this because the customers uh, have implemented the wide level product um, protocol of the XAD. So then the every protocol um, that uh, required by K Kubernetes um, is uh, uh, implemented in the customers um, uh, XAD API. So. Uh, if you want to uh, uh, try this uh, feature, so you can easily follow the uh, AKS uh, engine's uh, previous uh, uh, documents, and you can enable the customer DBs exit API and join your community class there. So with customer DB, since it, uh, it is uh, distributed globally, then your cluster could be easily uh, scaled uh, in, many, uh, in many bigger scales. Just, just a note yeah. of caution is that, that that capability is not yet available for the etcd interface on Cosmos DB. Yeah. During the preview phase right now, it's one availability zone for etcd data. Uh, yeah. As uh, Cosmos DB support for etcd grows, it will become uh, available to be globally replicated. Yeah, OK. Uh, next one. Uh, so the, the next one is about the networking. Uh, we, we have been working to support the, uh, both the IPv4 and the IPv6 uh, dual stack Kubernetes. So as you know, that the, for the current uh, Kubernetes, you could only run one stack, uh, either IPv4 or either uh, or IPv6. So we're working on the proposals to, to add the dual stack Kubernetes. And also, we, we have uh, uh, actually one um, pull request uh, today is uh, still under, under review. So we have uh, also listed the pull request here. Uh, if you are interested, uh, you can uh, 
comment there and uh, if you have any more ideas you can also uh, comment there so for, for this feature we would like to we're expecting the the feature would be uh, landed in the next release uh, 1.16 so then everyone can try uh, this feature and give feedbacks and also we can improve in the next release cycle so yeah in 1.16 the initial support is going to be for pod to pod communication yeah uh, the, sc the scope uh, and the idea is over over several releases we'll add alpha support for dual stack and more and more of the communication schemes across Kubernetes uh, okay. the reason to do this is that the IP stack uh, it touches so many pieces of Kubernetes. Uh, as you will see with this PR, even to do this very limited scope, uh, touches a huge number of files. And so we've had, we've worked very diligently, uh, with SIG networking and all of the other related projects to make sure that we're doing this in a very careful, uh, way. So we are not disruptive, uh, in how we, how we implement this. Yeah. So I want to talk a, a minute about just how you can become involved, right? So, you know, you're here to get questions answered or understand, you know, why we're doing what we are. Hopefully we've helped you answer that and maybe now you're interested. So uh, there are, are several ways. One is you already heard that SIG Azure is kind of decomposing into uh, cluster API and storage and so forth. So, uh, you know, stay tuned for the way the user group is going to work and then get involved in uh, cluster lifecycle. Join the mailing list because that's where we'll communicate about it, uh, but also join the Slack channel and ask your questions, uh, get help, uh, and, and figure out what's going on there. You can participate in the SIG meetings. Uh, today, those SIG meetings uh, occur at a time that is not at all convenient in this time zone. Uh, and we're very aware of that. Uh, in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to make a proposal for uh, when we do the subproject uh, under cluster lifecycle, we're going to alternate uh, the meeting times between Europe friendly times and Asia friendly times. Uh, and that way we can get a broader set of uh, participants. To get involved in contributing to the community, uh, starting with filing issues and reviewing PRs. So it's, you know, basic under, you know, getting involved in the engineering. If you want to figure out where you can contribute, uh, we maintain uh, a, a GitHub project board, uh, and here's the link to it. Uh, it uh, we try to, we do our diligence during the meetings to maintain and groom it and get new issues, uh, you know, like first, good first time issues labeled, bugs labeled and so forth, and then assign them to people and, and track the progress of those uh, issues through the project board and I encourage you to collaborate asynchronously that way. And with that, uh, we'd like to open it up for any questions. Uh, I have a question. What about the network plugin support policy for IO? Because Calico has released, released 3.7 in uh, last April, yeah. and uh, it supports Azure, and I have verified that 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 plugin, uh, that plugin, and uh, it can be used in a pure uh, Linux uh, Kubernetes cloud. So, uh, do, does anything change about the network plugin support policy? Yeah, uh, actually, Calico has made some changes in the uh, CM plugin. So, so uh, before the latest release, you, you know that. Uh, uh, the, the Calico could only be run as a policy only on Azure because uh, the, the, the underlying protocol is not, not supported. But today with the latest release, it, it supports VXLAN as the uh, um, overlay networking. So, so VXLAN is also supported for Azure. So, so, so now you can run the, the fully Calico CM plugin and it's a net, net policy on Azure. So yeah, so we, we may uh, introduce and also in, in the future uh, into AKS product. So, so we have time for one more, one last question. Unfortunately, yeah, uh, we we used all the time. Any other questions? No. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Really thank appreciate you. your time and attention.